Hey everyone, you with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how much it costs us to power two electric vehicles here in Sydney, Australia over the course of 28 days with our most recent power bills. Let's go check it out. Okay, so a little bit about me, Tesla Tom. I live with my family of four here in Sydney, Australia. We have two electric vehicles. That is our Tesla Model S and our Tesla Model 3 here behind me. We have two three-phase chargers, as you can see there, a Tesla Generation 3, as well as a Tesla Generation 2 wall connector. And I'm looking to upgrade that Generation 2 to a Generation 3 Tesla charger in the next few months to come. We also have 8.4 kilowatts of solar panels on our roof, as well as a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2. And to power our home, as well as to charge our electric vehicles, I use PowerShop as our electricity provider. I'm also subscribed to Evergen, which is a virtual power plant. Evergen pays me $10 per month, as well as $1 per kilowatt hour to take electricity from my battery when they need it. And I also use an app called Charge HQ, which is currently in beta development. It essentially uses a surplus solar power to charge my electric vehicles. You can also prioritize the home battery, i.e. the Tesla Powerwall 2, or your electric vehicles, which you can set in the preferences of the app. As I said, this Charge HQ app is currently in beta development. I'll leave the details of the app in the description below if you're interested. And finally, I use Teslascope, which is a web-based program to monitor the data of our Tesla Model 3 and Model S in terms of distance driven, as well as kilowatt hours used for both cars. And at this point, I just want to give a quick shout out to Teslascope, who have kindly given me a lifetime subscription to use their product. So as you can see here from the data from Teslascope, I've extrapolated that during the period of 16th of December 2021 to the 12th of January 2022, which is the billing cycle of this PowerShop bill, the Model S has driven 206 kilometers, whereas the Tesla Model 3 we've driven 651 kilometers in that time. The Model S has used 86 kilowatt hours for those 206 kilometers, whereas the Model 3 has used 156 kilowatt hours for those 651 kilometers. So in terms of efficiency, the Model 3 is far more efficient with a real world efficiency of 4.2 kilometers per kilowatt hour, whereas the Model S is clocking in at 2.4 kilometers per kilowatt hour. And this makes sense for me because I find that the Model S does suffer from more phantom drain compared to the Model 3 when all things are equal. In terms of home charging, in that period, 100% of charging was done at home for the Model S, whereas for Model 3, 98% was done at home. The remaining 2% was done at a DC fast charger. So for a total of 857 kilometers for both my cars, if you own ICE vehicles, or if you previously owned ICE vehicles before your Tesla, I want you to think about how much it would have cost you to fill up in petrol or diesel for that equivalent amount of range. Okay, so this is a snapshot of my power bill from PowerShop for the period of 16th of December to the 12th of January 2022. Let's go through it together. So I'm on a time of use tariff on PowerShop's electric vehicle plan. The off-peak period is broken down into two parts. It's 13.2 cents per kilowatt hour between the hours of 10 p.m. to 12 midnight every night and then between the hours of 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. every day. And for the second off-peak period of 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour, this is between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. And the peak period is 36.52 cents per kilowatt hour. And this is between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. every weekday, excluding weekends and public holidays. And the shoulder period is every other time outside off-peak or peak periods. So with this differential time of use tariff, I of course will try to charge my electric vehicles during that off-peak period where it's cheapest at 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's reflected in the bills. As you can see, during that period, I used 230 kilowatt hours of electricity, followed by 59 kilowatt hours in the other off-peak period. The shoulder period was 91 kilowatt hours, whereas the peak period was seven kilowatt hours. Of course, during that peak period is when the battery kicks in after the sun has set. And that's one of the greatest benefits of owning a battery like the Tesla Powerwall 2. It just covers that very expensive peak period in the evenings when everyone is home, uh, doing the cooking, cleaning, all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, even though the second off-peak period were at 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour, I used the most amount of electricity to charge both cars. 
it only comes in at $15.18. So altogether for my house and for charging the cars, there's a total of 387 kilowatt hours for that 28 day period, which equates to $72.35. But the savings don't end there. As you can see, on the 26th of December 2021, I purchased a bulk savings pack. I could have purchased this earlier, of course, but I only just joined PowerShop. So the cost to me was $30.89, but it bought me $35.52 of power. So approximately a $5 worth of saving there. And then the remainder of the bill is as is $36.83, which means that for $72 worth of power, I only paid $67.72. And then the feed-in tariff is five cents per kilowatt hour. I produced 373 kilowatt hours of excess solar, which gave me a credit of $18.65. And then one more saving is the Evergen VPP credit. I received $17.59 of credit from Evergen for this period. If you exclude the $10 retainer I get per month from Evergen, that means Evergen took 7.59 kilowatt hours of electricity from my battery during this period. And at $1 per kilowatt hour, I got an extra $7.59 from Evergen for them to take my electricity. Which means that in total, it was $67.72 from PowerShop, minus $18.65 from the solar feed-in tariff, minus $17.59 from Evergen, which means that for the 28 days, I only paid $31.48 to power my home, as well as to charge both electric vehicles. And again, if you just go back to this slide here, where during this 28 period, both cars traveled 857 kilometers, I want you to think about how much that would have cost you in petrol or diesel for that equivalent amount of range, whereas I only paid $31.48 for those 28 days, which also includes powering the home as well. And of course, this is the beauty of PowerShop. You can actually prepay your power and save even more. So for example, I've got a uh, future savings pack coming up for May, which is four months away. But if I pay $25 now, I get $30 worth of credit. As well as for June, if I pay $30 now, I get $37 worth of credit. To me, that's a no-brainer. I'll, of course, add those to the cart pretty soon after this video to take advantage of savings later in the year. And of course, if you're interested in signing up with PowerShop, I'll leave a link to my referral in the description below. You get $75 worth of credit. I also get $75 worth of credit as well for both of us using PowerShop. All right, guys, well, that was how much I paid for electricity for our house, as well as to charge both our Tesla Model S and Model 3. Only $31.48 for the 28 days. I'll try to do a roundup each month of how much it costs me and my family to charge both cars as well as to power our house. And that way you get an idea of how much it costs to charge an electric vehicle at home at different times of the year here in Sydney, Australia. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like as well as subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already yet. In the comments below, tell me if you are thinking of buying a Tesla Model 3 and whether how much it costs to charge that car is one of the deciding factors whether you pull the switch on that car or not. If you already own a Tesla Model 3 or another electric vehicle, tell me which power company you're with and how much it costs you to charge your EV. All right, guys, stay safe. And until the next time, happy charging.